Wisdom teeth or symptomatic wisdom teeth are often referred to the oral surgeon. There's a couple of reasons for this. Number one, uh, an anxious patient, someone who's not looking forward to it, and let's face it, who, who really does, uh, they're going to be sent to us because we can provide different levels of anesthesia for it, whether it be oral sedation or full IV uh, anesthesia, or in some cases, have to intubate and breathe for them using an anesthesia machine. These are all things that are in the armamentarium of the oral surgeon. Impacted versus non-impacted teeth really kind of uh, depends on the age. You know, if you come in and you're a very large ex-NFL football player and yours are all erupted, it's probably going to be just as difficult as any impacted tooth and maybe a little bit more so and, and, and certainly worse with age. And the doctor, whether it's the orthodontist or dentist, doesn't think that they have room for them, so they want them removed before that becomes a real problem. Or you have somebody who's already having symptoms, and which could be anything from pain, swelling, to bleeding when they brush. And so we see all of those. Most of our uh, post-operative management of extractions, wisdom teeth, uh, all are accompanied by uh, post-operative an uh, anesthetics of some type uh, or agents of anesthesia. Uh, that may include uh, non-steroidal medicines like Aleve or Advil, but it most of the time will also involve narcotics. Um, and then there's also usually some things that are given in conjunction with that, like uh, a mouth rinse to kind of help with hygiene. Also, we'll usually give something for, for nausea just in case it happens. We don't see a lot of it, but when you do have it, it's nice to have something and not have to, to, to be worried about having to deal with it on your own.